All right, so welcome to the diffraction lab. Here we have a laser, which I've turned on and left on for a while to stabilize. It is hitting a pinhole, which is 200 microns in diameter. Out of the other side of the pinhole emerges the, the laser light. And it starts off as a very tiny 200 micron spot. And as I back up, the spot gets bigger and bigger and eventually turns into a visible diffraction pattern. That's this bullseye pattern. So let's come around and I'll talk about how we do the detection. Eventually the spot hits this detector and this is a photodiode with another small one millimeter pinhole in front of it. And the photodiode is on a translation stage that I can move and I can uh, measure where I am relative to some arbitrary zero spot. And as I move, the small pinhole in front of the photodiode back and forth, the photodiode gets amplified with this amplifier and the voltage is read out with this voltmeter. And so the way I'm going to take data is I'm going to slide the uh, detection pinhole to many different locations in X and pause and take voltage data which is proportional to the intensity of the light that's going through this one millimeter hole here. And uh, I have to keep two things in mind. One is I chose the size of this hole to be pretty small. Maybe I could even go, go smaller. Uh, I just want to accurately sample a point. If I make the, the hole too small, then the, the not enough light gets through to make a reasonable voltage reading. And I also have to make sure that the height of this is adjusted so that it's right in the center. And I'm sampling data right through the center of the diffraction pattern. Otherwise, I will have to fit a different curve to the data. All right, so this is the second experiment we're doing with diffraction. The laser has still been on for a long time. It is hitting the pinhole. And on the other side of the pinhole, a spot emerges. And as I back up, the spot gets bigger and bigger and turns into a diffraction pattern that is just entering the, the camera. I've removed the lens on the camera and the spot is hitting the camera sensor directly. And I can take pictures with the camera, which you can then analyze uh, the two-dimensional diffraction pattern. Okay, so for the next diffraction experiment, I'm going to need to install what's called a spatial filter. And a spatial filter takes this laser beam, which is very tiny, but if you zoom in on it, it would look um, it w wouldn't look very good, it wouldn't look very clean. And it turns it into a much cleaner beam. And that beam will also be quite uh, a clean Gaussian beam. That beam will also spread out quite a bit. Uh, but, but that's okay for the next experiment. And uh, one of the important things is I want, after I've filtered it, I want the beam to go roughly in the same direction. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where the, the laser goes right now, just to give myself something to shoot for. And now I'm going to install the spatial filter. So before I put it in, let me just describe what, what this is. This first part here is just a microscope objective. And the second part, which I can actually pull out and show, this is a pinhole. And it's very small. It's so small I can barely tell that there's any hole there. Uh, it's a hole in a piece of foil that used to be attached but is now taped onto this mount, uh, which uh, goes in here. and you can move around that pinhole in the x-direction and in the y-direction with these two adjusters. And so the idea at the end of the day is to get that laser, laser beam exactly focused through the center of that pinhole. And if, if that's the case, then what emerges is a beautiful clean beam. And there's a third knob here, which is the z-direction. This just adjusts how close the microscope objective is to the pinhole. And so uh, to start the process, I'm going to actually defocus it by quite a bit. Because as the focus gets uh, more and more correct, the X and Y alignment becomes more and more sensitive. So, so I'm just sort of setting it to a random, random focal position. I'm going to put it in the mount. And the thing to watch here is the back reflection into the laser. And so if I'm kind of off in either direction, the back reflection into the laser doesn't, doesn't uh, approach the, doesn't go right back into the laser. And so by carefully holding it and locking it in, I can get the, uh, that's sort of the gross adjustments and I can do fine adjustments with this ring 
to really get the, uh, the height and the X and Y correct. And we'll do more fine adjustments in a bit. And now there's a defocused laser spot hitting this pinhole. And what comes out the other side is, maybe you can barely see it, it's quite dim, uh, but it's, it's a little bit off. And I can move it around by doing some, some X and Y adjustments. Um, so the X and Y adjustment, I, I want to adjust it to make the spot as bright as possible. And on the zoom in camera, you can sort of see in the center where it's, where it's bright. And the Y adjustment, same thing. Um, I'm not worrying about the position when I'm doing these X and Y adjustments of the pinhole. The position is determined by the overall X and Y adjustment of the whole, the whole mount. So if it's too far to the left, which it is, I need to move it over and then adjust the pinhole to match. Adjust it so that the, the maximum, uh, maximum brightness happens where I want it to happen. So there we go, that's, that's pretty good. And in X, and now in height, I will turn this knob. That's probably going in the wrong direction. Uh, yeah, this, the height knob here also twists it a little bit, which is um, not very productive. So let me, let me bring it back down and see if I can get it. There we go. So that is, oh, I see. This is not, uh, not the easiest thing to adjust correctly. Okay, so I've locked it in. And the maximum brightness, that occurs pretty close to where I want the spot. And now I will adjust the focus. So by, by adjusting the focus, two things should happen. One, the spot should get brighter, as long as it's correctly centered. Um, and two, the spot should get cleaner. And so every time I adjust the focus, I have to re refine the brightest position and maybe even re adjust the X and Y locations here. So, there we go. And now, get closer to the, the right focus, it's gonna get brighter. And now it's wandering off, so I have to readjust it. Okay, refocus a little bit more, focus, focus, focus. And as I focus it, these X and Y knobs become very, very sensitive. It's pretty good, focus, 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 wow. Okay, so now, there we go. We pretty much have a nice, that's sort of the point of best focus. We pretty much have a nice uh, uniform beam that's Gaussian in shape. And I'll do some final X and Y and focus adjustments just to make it look as uniform as possible centered around where the laser was going. That's how you adjust a spatial filter. For our last uh, diffraction experiment, I've installed a razor blade in front of this spatial filter and a post here to keep students from cutting themselves on this rusty razor blade. And what's happening is the spatially filtered light, which is spreading out in a nice growing Gaussian beam, is hitting the razor blade uh, and the razor blade is cutting through roughly the center, uh, which you can see because the uh, razor blade is, is hitting this dot here. The razor blade shadow is going through the dot. And the shadow of the razor blade, there's a little hole in the razor blade, you can see that, has an interesting pattern. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Um, and the actual razor part of the razor blade has some ripples that come off. And this is diffraction from uh, an approximation to a half infinite uh, sheet. And I have one adjustment here, which is to turn this micrometer and move the razor blade slightly left and right. And the razor blade is, you know, on the order of uh, between five and 10 centimeters away from the, 
pinhole of the space shell filter. And eventually I'll remove this piece of paper and we'll let this pattern go all the way back to the detector at the end of the table. Okay, here I've put a piece of paper on the far end uh, near where the, in front of the detector. And you can see the ripple pattern a little bit better. This is the diffraction pattern off of the laser beam. And you can see that there's one, uh, the first central maximum is a little bit brighter than how it eventually spreads out. Um, and then you see some, some nulls and uh, some local maxima. And I'm going to remove the piece of paper and we're going to record this diffraction pattern with the same detector setup we had before. Which, let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, here's my one millimeter pinhole, um, which is connected to the amplifier and the voltmeter.